It's time for Shakespeare. It's time for Shakespeare. We are still in Coriolanus, surprise, surprise, because we're only in Act 2. We're going to be in this play for a little while longer. Um, this is a very long monologue. I'm try to, going to try to be quick about it because it's kind of late in the evening. It's been a long day. Like, look at me. I'm wearing, like, a fancy dress and all this sort of stuff. Anyway, um, today we get to hear from Cominius. And if you remember from yesterday, we started off Act 2, Scene 2. Now they're going to go through the whole ceremony of appointing Coriolanus to the consul and, and giving him his proper title of Coriolanus, which is a title, not necessarily a name. And in order to do that, he is supposed to stand in front of the people naked and show off his battle scars and they will and ask for everybody's permission and they will then give him their voices. So as the first step in this, Yesterday we heard that we're going to get a nice little recap of all of the stuff that he's done just to prove that he's worthy, whatever, whatever. And after, after that little speech, the two tribunes, Brutus and Sicinius Volutus, get a little snarky and um, Coriolanus is not really enjoying their snark, so he gets up to leave, and they're like, whoa, 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 hang on, you like, you gotta hang out for this. And he's like, you know what, I would rather get a root canal than hear you guys talk about my battle exploits. So he leaves, and they're like, um, well, we're still gonna go along with this, so we still have to hear why he's a good guy for the job. So, Cominius, tell us, like, recount all of his stuff, and Cominius says, I shall lack voice. The deeds of Coriolanus should not be uttered feebly. It is held that valor is the chiefest virtue and most dignifies the haver. If it be, the man I speak of cannot in all the world be singly counterpoised. At sixteen years, when Tarkin made a head for Rome, he fought beyond the mark of others. Our then dictator, whom, with all praise, I point at, saw him fight when with his Amazonian chin he drove the bristled lips before him. He bestrid an oppressed Roman and in the consul's view slew three oppressors. Tarkin's self he met and struck him on his knee. In that day's feats, when he might act the woman in the scene, he proved the best man in the field, and for his mead was brow-bound with the oak. His pupil age, man entered thus, he waxed like the sea, and in the brunt of seventeen battles since, <laughs> he lurched all swords of the garland. For this last, before and in Corioli, let me say, I cannot speak him home. He stopped the flyers, and by his rare example made the coward turn terror into sport, as weeds before a vessel under sail. So men obeyed and fell below his stem, his sword, death stamp, where it did mark, it took from face to foot. He was a thing of blood whose every motion was timed with dying cries. Alone, he entered the mortal gate of the city, which he painted with shunless destiny. Aidless came off and, with a sudden reinforcement, struck Corioli like a planet. Now all's his. When by and by the din of war again pierce his ready sense, then straight his doubled spirit requickened what in flesh was fatigate, and to the battle came he, where he did run reeking o'er the lives of men as if twere a perpetual spoil, until we call and till we called both field and city ours, he never stood to ease his breast with panting. So yeah, I think Cominius gets a little excited, a little worked up about all the stuff that Coriolanus has done, and frankly, it's kind of an impressive resume. So tomorrow, we'll see what the rest of the people listening thought about this nice, lovely resume that, that Cominius just 
read off for us. I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah.